and welcome to what I hope is the first of uh, many Scenic View drone videos where we talk about uh, aerial and terrestrial data collection services. And today I'm excited to talk about a LiDAR sensor from Green Valley International. It's the Li Air V50. It has a photogrammetry camera on it for point cloud colorization. It also works uh, to create ortho mosaics at the same time. It's very good. You do have to fly quite a bit higher. Um, to get a little bit lower of a point cloud density, but very, very manageable, very doable. There are some limitations, but for most projects, it works very good. Uh, we're going to talk about a project that we did this week for a forestry company for steep slope logging. Uh, it was an interesting project. It was really cold out there, and it was really quite steep, so we had to learn how to uh, do some, uh, some flight plans uh, differently on that one. Uh, some part of me flight paths, but um, all in all it was definitely a it went well uh, And I'm excited to show you that the data afterwards on the computer um, But once we uh, first we're going to show you how how well this thing works and how easy it is to install and uh, Any problems that I've run into on the first time I set up and and how I I rectified those and work through them all Let's dig into it so when we first got out there, the, uh, it was really cold. I had to get the heater going, had all the batteries in front of it to keep it as warm as possible. And so we stuck the batteries in and uh, started the system up inside to make sure everything was uh, connected properly. And then I set up the base station. Um, I went outside and put this on a tripod actually. They, the one that comes in the kit actually comes with a nice little stand, but it uh, works maybe, I don't know, in the city somewhere on top of a, a known point. But um, yeah, you just press the record button on the base station and as soon as that's done, um, you're ready set. You need to have it recording for a while before you take off. But uh, I think it's about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we set up the drone, connected the uh, rotor arms, fastened them, make sure that they're all uh, ready to go, turned on the Lyre V system, had that uh, going for a little while before we take off. It takes about two to three minutes. Put the SD card in, don't drop it. I recommend not doing that. And then um, you uh, set all your uh, flight parameters through whatever software you're doing and away you go. want to show you how easy it is there's a uh, this system is really easy the only thing I would say that on a, on a setup of this thing is the mounting bracket for this thing uh, the rubber on it is especially sticky so sliding them onto the slider rails takes a lot of force I would recommend some soap and water to get them into place and then do some fine adjustments um, other than that this thing is really slick so it is a Twist on, and it's locked. Push button, just like any Skyport, works really slick. Um, one of the things about the SMA connectors I would say is, as you can see, I've routed the SMA connector up here and down the side. I actually purchased SMA extensions, uh, 10 inch SMA connectors, extension cables off of Amazon. They were really cheap. Um, they work great. The reason why I did that is for the M600 battery. They didn't provide enough cable in front of this battery here um, to allow for the cable would be in front of the battery here. Um, it would actually wrap right around and go down the side and it had enough room without stretching it or straining it, but it was right in the way of the battery. So it didn't work for me. So I added the extension cable and it's been great since I would recommend that. And I believe the M300 and the M210 are, are fine. Uh, they have enough room. So this would only apply to the M600. Um, you just take the two, 
plug them into the side. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing there, but and that's good. And then once you have that plugged in, um, I added a, a dedicated power supply to this so that it doesn't run off the battery on the M600. There's a bunch of reasons. Maybe we'll talk about that later, why that's beneficial. Sometimes you may want to do that. Other times you may just want to just run it off the regular power. Um, so what I did is plug in the main power cable, turn on your battery or your drone. Normally this would plug into the main power port on the bottom. And then you just press the power button press and hold for about two seconds. It'll start doing its calibration. Well, we have to put the antennas on first, but of course we have no GPS signal inside here. So take your GNSS antennas. Nice and snug, not over tight. I haven't had any problems with them coming loose, so that's been great. Um, I'd say, you know, one of the other awesome features about having an M600 paired with the uh, Lyre V is the onboard camera they use for photogrammetry. It has an H micro HDMI cable and you can plug right into the side of that. And as anybody, if you guys have done photogrammetry, you can imagine it's really nice to be able to monitor the photos that are being taken as you're flying to avoid over or under exposure. And, but yeah, I mean, that's it. That's all you need for setup. Um, this will usually take about three to four minutes for it to do its um, calibration at the beginning. And uh, the only times I've ever had troubles with it is when I was in a uh, treed area. Uh, it was having trouble getting a GPS um, signal is what I believe was going on. And then I just moved it and it's fine. Other than that, I've never had any trouble with it setting up. Um, you are going to want to, on the first time, uh, identify how you want this thing to start its data collection. When you want to start, once this thing and all the lights go blue and your drone is powered on and you're ready to fly, you go and you press this power button. Just once, one little quick click, and that will light up your record light. That means it's armed, it's ready to record. But before you do that, you're going to want to plug the sensor into your laptop or your computer, whatever you're using. Um, this end plugs to the sensor and then this will plug in through your network cable and you'll log in through the browser and you'll have to set it up one of three uh, data collections. Uh, one would be uh, by speed, so once it reaches a certain speed it'll start recording. The other one is once it reaches a certain height it'll start recording. Um, that one's nice because if you are, as long as you're not going down lower than you're starting, um, then, then it's fine. But the reason why that one's nice is as you go up, it starts and then once you come back down it'll stop so it only collects data in between those two points um, so when you um, are changing batteries and stuff like that it's 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 useful for data collection uh, there are a couple other met methods I know that they're looking into starting and stopping recording manually by the button on the controller but I don't think that's implemented yet um, yeah this thing this thing's pretty simple Let's check out some data on the computer. We'll go from there. So this is LiDAR 360, uh, Green Valley International's main software processing suite. Um, we're going to look at some of the visualization tools and uh, the terrain module. There's a couple other modules in here, and there's a lot of other tools. But we're just going to touch on those briefly. Um, let's dig into the visualization. Let's go to 3D. So there's the point cloud. This is the, uh, the flight up on the steep slope logging they were doing there. So we have different types of uh, visualization tools. Right now it's by elevation on a color scheme. You can take elevation and you can pick any one of these color schemes you want. Uh, some of them are nicer, but I mean, everything to your own preference. So once we got that, let's, uh, if you colorize your point cloud, you can color view it by color. You can also view it by intensity. And uh, let's go back to color here for a second and take a look at the logging block here. There we go. Yeah, it's nice. There's the equipment. They're all working away there. And one machine was swinging mid-flight. Uh, let's take a look at the ground points here. So I pre-classified this file already. So let's take a look at just the ground points. 
And this is my favorite part of the software is the ground point identification. Um, I got, a, I got a hole right here, and that's because I was trying to be a little too picky to try to give you guys a really good example. But this program do, does a phenomenal job of identifying just the true ground points. A lot of other softwares, they kind of, the, yeah, they, they don't get all the other points. Like you'll have like the bottom of a tree, you'll see there's going to be points. They come up and over, and they, they try to get as many points as possible to keep that point density up, where I think that this, this one does a much better job at... Um, giving you true accurate data. If you want the higher point densities, you can you can change the settings a little bit to get the higher point densities, but at the end of the day, your main goal is to get a terrain data and an elevation model. This is what you want. So let's, uh, let's make one actually. Let's go to the terrain layer. So now that we've classified the point clouds, uh, you want to go, let's, let's make a bare earth. So that would be a dim. You would select your resolution on X and Y Select your triangulation mode here. Let's just stay with Tim. You know what? I actually made this already. So normally you'd click OK, but I'm just going to go to File, Data, Add Data. Select my DEM right there. So here we have the DEM. So now you can export this, and for other people, if they want to use that, um, they can go. Let's hey, I have another software open right here. Um, and this is what it looks like. So we can zoom in, and you can actually see I've all of the uh, individual tracks looks like an ant farm from all the equipment in here. Um, the detail is very high and it's still very smooth looking. That's good. Let's go back to LiDAR 360. So let's uh, go to the terrain module here again and make a hill shade. So you're going to select the dem that you just created. It's kind of nice. They actually automatically highlight the folder that you're working in. So it picks the file right there. And you have some settings here. Let's just hit OK, see what happens. This is going to take a second, but oh, never mind. It's going pretty quick. Oh, look at that. Hillshade. Yeah, nice. It's a little bit dark, but yeah, no, that works for sure. Gives you a good idea of what's going on. Let's get rid of the these guys here. Um, I didn't delete those. Those are actually now made. They're in your folder. Those are exportable documents that you can give for deliverables. Uh, let's go back to the 3D. Am I upside down? Oh, I just totally confused myself there. So as you can see, yeah, the, the visualization tool in here is, is really good. I don't know what else to show you. I, I want to show you more in the software, but I'll have to do another video another time because there's just too much to, uh, to go through. But as, you know, just bare tools, this thing does a really good job for uh, point cloud visualization, and its uh, its workflow is really smooth. Let's go uh, talk about an overview on the Lyair V50 system, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, I just wanted to talk about a few pros and cons. Um, most of the cons that I experienced with this thing were all uh, fixed right at the beginning. Um, it was the SMA connectors that I had talked about uh, being a little bit too short. I had a software issue on the LiAcquire software, uh, which was actually, I, I was able to figure out how to bypass it at the beginning, but then uh, Green Valley International, they actually uh, fixed the software within, I think, a couple days. It was really quick. Um, I would say the only real con that I, I had had come up with for this thing is I expected a little bit more coverage area per flight. Um, that's also restricted to the drone that you're using. Um, if you use like the M300, you can get a significant more area done. Um, but um, it only has a 40 degree field of view and it requires a 34%, a minimum 34% overlap, which it works really good if you don't have to go above 34%. Um, so yeah, I just, it was, I could have, could have expected, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more area uh, coverage. Um, other than that, there is some benefits to that, however. I really noticed that uh, the ground point penetration, um, really good through the trees, through, through thick tree canopies. Uh, I was really impressed right away. Um, so there's, de there's that. Uh, for other pros, the camera. Uh, I mean, normally you buy a LiDAR sensor for the LiDAR sensor, not the camera. But honestly, this camera is really impressive. The quality, the uh, color, uh, everything in the camera side of things is really good. It's what you could expect from one of Sony's uh, cameras. 
um, but it actually has a trigger interval rate of up to 0.8 seconds, which you can cover a lot of area with that thing. Um, I have actually used it just for photogrammetry and to test it all out, and it works really slick. Um, other than that, I would say the other big pro on this one is their software. Um, I didn't get to show you guys much. Um, I'd like to do it in another video, but if you guys haven't already checked out their LiDAR 360 software, I'd go to their website, uh, which is greenvalleyinternational.com. Just Google it, you'll figure it out. And uh, download their 30-day free trial. It's got a full access. You can use everything for 30 days. And uh, even once that runs out, the reason why I recommend is it actually is still capable of being used as a viewer, a point cloud viewer. And they have one of the best iDome shading uh, uh, viewers, in my opinion. So definitely check them out. I'm going to do another video uh, about their LiAcquire software. That would be taking the data from the sensor onto the computer and geo-referencing it, uh, colorization of the point clouds, boresight alignment, and many other, and trim tools. There's lots of stuff in there. So I'd like to spend some time on that software. So look for uh, another video sometime. Uh, other than that, I would say thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys again.